welcome to the Refugees in a New Land podcast from the Times News and MagicValley.com. We're following a refugee family from the Democratic Republic of the Congo as they move to Twin Falls and start a new life. Here's reporter Titona Dunlap. This one-year reporting project is a massive job, but on November 17th, I was just one day into the project. At noon, I waited in my car outside a Twin Falls apartment building until the College of Southern Idaho Refugee Center's white van drove up. Resettlement manager Chandra Upredi got out carrying boxes of diapers. I followed him up the stairs to apartment B, where four children were chasing each other through the rooms and screaming. This was the apartment of Connie Gamba Mulagwe, his wife Beatrice Bahati, and their two children, Sarah and Daniel. The night before they had arrived at the Twin Falls airport, the refuge from the violence they fled in the Democratic Republic of the Congo. Bahati was away from home that afternoon, visiting the wife of the Swahili interpreter I had met the night before, and the interpreter's two children were there, playing with Sarah and Daniel. The company's working, right? At that moment, at least, the children seemed unfazed by their long journey from a refugee camp in Malawi, or by the radically different environment they found themselves in. Their parents, however, had a lot to learn. Upredi's job that day was to make sure the couple fully understood everything he told them the night before. How to turn on the oven, how to lock and unlock the door, how to use the shower. So um, what I think I'll do is I'll go ahead and start the orientation that might answer most of the questions he has and at, when we're done, um, then I'll give him the chance to ask any questions he might have. In this strange new place, refugees like Malawi and Bahati are completely dependent on the refugee center for advice, for rides, for all the necessities of a family of four. So, I really want him to carry this card in his wallet everywhere he goes. The reason being, if you get lost, many people don't remember their address, and it's very difficult for them to get home. But if he has this card, he can show it to anyone, and they will know the address. They also, I also, sorry, I also have the language he speaks here. Okay, so, so interpreter. So. In the first few weeks, however, this couple isn't likely to venture far. They really hate this winter weather, and they're scared to take walks. But they have to deal with some things right away, like the mail. That afternoon, you pretty warn Malabwe that he shouldn't ignore the mail that arrives in his box. He should bring electricity bills to the refugee center to be paid. If he doesn't, you pretty warn, the electricity could be cut off. Malabwe already had a request that day. He needed a mop, because the children had spilled soda on the floor. You pretty said he'd handle that, and he offered a lot of other help, too. They can go anywhere they want. <laughs> <laughs> like, be careful because it's easy to get lost when you're new. Oh, yeah. so <laughs> uh, it's very important that if you do not understand, always ask. You can ask the same thing over, over and over again, but just ask. Okay? Oh. Okay, so I'll see you tomorrow. Okay? Yes, thanks. Bye-bye, John Hear those loud clicks? That's my co-worker's camera. Drew Nash, the newspaper's chief photographer, was my partner on the scene that day. I wasn't just trying to make happy pictures, but I like subjects to be relaxed. That day, Sarah warmed up to me a little bit, and I got some smiles. She stopped to look at me, acknowledge me. We made funny faces at each other, but her mother hadn't looked me in the eye yet, and she doesn't speak unless she's spoken to. I still didn't know how to say the father's name. Drew and I were on the scene, but the person back in the newsroom coordinating our efforts was Virginia Hutchins, the newspaper's enterprise editor. When Titona got back to the office that afternoon and listened to her audio clips, she realized that the key moments were dominated by the sound of Drew's shudder. He, of course, wants lots of frames to choose from, but Drew agreed to compromise adjusting his camera settings and shooting fewer frames. It's good teamwork, and it goes both ways. For her part, Titona does a good job at staying out of Drew's shots. She's a former photographer herself, and she pays attention to which lenses and angles Drew is using. 
For the next few days, the Refugee Center's schedule of orientations basically dictated my reporting schedule. I followed Mulabwe and Bahati to the center where they learned about applying for Social Security, Medicaid, and food stamps. I went along to Walmart when Ukredi took them shopping for winter coats and shoes. But I also needed to see this couple in other settings. What would daily life look like? Would they make friends in this new city? That's something you pretty advised them to do. So the, 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 the goal of the refugee center is to help you adopt to this new environment. And I understand that things will not be always be easy. So um, sometimes people go through this frustration. Part of it is you are new. Everything is new to them. You miss people back home and stuff. But the longer you stay, the more comfortable you will feel. So, um, some of the things that helps is um, making friends in which you're already connected, so your work is gone already. So, it's nice that you get into the community, talk to them, make friends. One of their first friends was Allison Bangader, a Twin Falls woman who volunteered to be a refugee mentor. Malagwe and Bahati are the first refugees she's been assigned to. Bangader had been at the airport to greet them November 16th, armed with a fruitcake wrapped in plastic and pictures that her children drew for the family. Ten days later, the family was among the crowd at her house for Thanksgiving dinner. Yeah, the couple waited quietly at a long table while Bangader was busy um, in the kitchen. Just a few people stopped to talk to the quiet couple at the table with the help of interpreter Mary Lapumba, but the crowd all came together for the Thanksgiving prayer by Bangadur's husband, Joel. Our Father in Heaven, we thank you for this day. We thank you for the opportunity we have to express our gratitude and to give thanks unto thee for the bounties that thou hast provided us with. We thank thee for the moisture which we have received and for the beautiful land in which we live. We ask thee to please bless us that we will have health and strength in our lives and our homes. Bless us that we will be happy and that we will, will prosper. In this, we pray, come be in the name of thy Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. So, if you would like to get a plate, um, and then we can come over here, and we'll just kind of have a line to get you. Watch out, you okay? Um, and just, uh, we'll come and leave a line over here to, to get our food. So, just get a plate. The food looked great, but I didn't eat. I was too busy taking notes on the conversations around the table. Alison Bangoder wanted to know how Malabwe and Bahati were adjusting to their move. It was difficult to hear that conversation among all the others happening around the table. Okay. okay. Have, have you been happy? Did you leave a lot of family back, back home? In the jumble of overlapping conversations, I could hear Joel Bangader describing the cycle of Idaho seasons to his new friends. Interpreting from Mulawe, Lapumba described the weather back home in Africa, including the rainy season. Joel Bangader said he wished Idaho had a rainy season. While Titona filled her notebook, the photographer drew was looking for the candid human moments that make great photography. One of our lead images came from that day's shoot. 
It's one-year-old Daniel Malabwe pressed against his mother's side as he looks at the big spread of food. His sister, Sarah, is in another of Drew's best photos from that day. Walking into a stranger's home on a family holiday is always a little unnerving. I slowly started introducing myself while scanning the room, watching for moments and following the light. When the Malabwe family arrived, it was Sarah that I followed most. Her curious nature emerged as she watched the other children horse around. One of my favorite pictures on that day is when she grabbed a few toys from some colorful bins, a painting of an LDS temple behind her. In an environment a world away from what she's ever known, I made an environmental portrait of Sarah. So we had strong images, and the makings of a compelling story. But we still hadn't asked this family for their permission to follow their lives for a whole year. Without the cultural and language differences we're dealing with, that question would have been asked at the very beginning. And we still don't know whether we'll be able to arrange for a Swahili interpreter past the point that the refugee center stops providing one for this family. But one thing is certain, we'll never be able to pull off this project without taking some risks. In our next episode, we'll hear Connie Gamba Mulabwe talking about his life in a crowded, hungry refugee camp. And we'll confront the big questions that our series depends on. Refugees in a New Land is produced by The Times News in Twin Falls, Idaho, with Enterprise Editor Virginia Hutchins, reporters Titona Dunlap and Julie Wooten, photographers Drew Nash and Stephen Reese, and digital editor Kyle Hansen. Music by Chris Zabriskie. Find more about this project and complete coverage of South Central Idaho's news at magicvalley.com.